So we've arrived at the spooky season and I am just so excited. I've got a bunch of lists that I'm going to be bringing to you. Some, like today's, will be totally accessible and an ease into the horror genre. Now, my plan is to post a new list video each week of October, and hopefully there are going to be at least a few things that maybe you haven't seen. Now, I did my best to choose titles that you can find on streaming channels, at least in the US, but I'll tell you where I found each of them and then put chapter markers down in the description below. So to kick off this series, I wanted to talk about five very accessible zombie movies. Now, I have these ranked in my order of preference, but know that each of them does contain at least some nugget of goodness, otherwise they just wouldn't be on the list. I'd also like to know what zombie movies you love, and I know there is a crap ton available. So, all right, let's dive in. First up is a zombie film from 1985, and admittedly, this one is laughable and it's fairly cheesy by today's standards. Now, this is a horror comedy sort of sequel called The Return of the Living Dead. All right, so I think you just rolled your eyes. But before you check out of this and just hop into the comments to tell me why this shouldn't be anywhere near a horror list, I want you to hear me out. Two guys in an industrial medical supply warehouse accidentally break open a government container that's filled with toxic gas, and then that starts bringing the dead back to life. Now, I love that the movie is self-aware in the fact that when a dead thing stops being dead, the characters then reference Night of the Living Dead. I mean, almost as source material, like it was fact that had just been dramatized for the movie. Now, the acting in this is terrible, and it's so over the top that it is laughable. The character spends so much time screaming and moaning, either in agony or in distress, that it can get on your nerves. But here's the thing that really freaked me out as a kid while I was watching this. Removing the head or destroying the brain, it doesn't kill the zombies. And they're aware of their state of deadness. It's a unique twist that makes the zombies creepier, because they're almost unstoppable. Now, the whole thing takes place in less than 24 hours, so there's a very compressed timeline that adds a bunch of tension and urgency to the story. And the story also relies heavily on the mid-80s cultural outlook of the punk scene. There's a group of punk rockers that are written as nihilists, and they're against every establishment, and they seemingly welcome death. And in one very ironic scene, a character even jokes about being eaten by a large group of men. And then you can guess what happens later on in the film. There is a ton of gory carnage in this, and the practical effects are still impressive today. The makeup occasionally will be a bit wanting, but the majority of the time, the dead are menacing and freaky. And I especially love it when we see zombies that are nearing the liquefied state. I mean, it's just nasty, but it's super effective too. Now, this is by far a terrible movie, but it's also an amazing one. It's campy, silly, even absurd, and then it manages to create some dread and uneasiness, especially when the characters are faced with a foe that can't be stopped. The Return of the Living Dead is available on Amazon Prime, so if you're in the mood for cheese and brains, give it a go. Next up is a completely different type of zombie movie. In 2002, Danny Boyle put Killian Murphy and Naomi Harris up against a horde of rage monsters in 28 Days Later. Now, this is available on HBO Max, and there are some very harrowing scenarios within this. The opening scene informs us of how the rage virus infects people in a quick and violent way that starts off our film. Now, not all of the cinematography holds up, and it feels very early 2000s with a lot of quick cuts into strange angles with a look that's grainy and then typically oversaturated. But even with some of that dated feel to the presentation, there are also some very impressive shots that create a huge sense of dread and then loneliness. I'm impressed that parts of London were shut down to accomplish some of the shots. And the scene that's on Westminster Bridge, it is so isolating. And I love how tiny Killian's character of Jim looks as he just wanders along the road that's littered with garbage. And then zero people. Something that makes this movie stand out from other zombie films is in how quick the infected are. It is common right now to watch a zombie movie and have the undead or the infected clip along at a fast pace. But we also know that traditionally they would just amble along at a frustratingly molasses-like pace. When these infected come at you, they are racing and it is a terrifying prospect to watch these crazed beings just hurl themselves through the air in order to get at their targets. Now, I love how it immediately creates a huge state of urgency to get away or find shelter. Now, in addition to Murphy and Harris, we also get some wonderful performances from Brendan Gleeson and Christopher Eggleston. Gleeson is cheery and quirky, and I love the slightly lighthearted sentiment that he brings. Now, he's not comic relief, but he's doing his best to keep up morale, which makes him come across as way more jovial than his traveling companions. And then in stark contrast, we got Eccleston as an army major. And as soon as we meet this dude, the hairs on my neck just start tingling. He's off in a way that I can't immediately pinpoint, but he's not somebody where you can let your guard down around. Now for me, probably the most freaky, uncomfortable, or even terrifying scene comes when the characters are eating dinner with some of the soldiers. Now seriously, I got mild vibes of the table scene in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where there is this mounting unease that just grows and grows. 
So while not all of the filmmaking choices hold up as awesome just because of how they feel dated, the overall story and the presentation certainly still deliver a thrilling watch that's going to put you on the edge of your seat with suspense and anticipation. Now this spawns some sequels, and I've not seen any of them, so I can't speak to their quality, but this first entry is definitely worth checking out. We've now come to my third pick, and this one is wildly different than the others. In 2017, a Christmas-themed zombie musical had a very limited release, and when it came to VOD, I watched it nine times in 48 hours. I mean, I was instantly hooked. Anna and the Apocalypse follows several high school friends as a zombie apocalypse decimates their tiny town. Now, it's available right now on Pluto, which I believe is a free streaming platform supported by ads. Now, the story is very simple, and actually it's a bit thin. It's really just about this group of kids trying to survive. Now, obviously, they're caught off guard by what happens, and then spend the 90 minutes avoiding the bitey undead around them. So why is this one worth checking out? Well, first, it's the music. I mean, the songs are catchy, extremely well-written, and then the cast, they have phenomenal voices. There's also a lot of humor that's captured within the lyrics, and when that's combined with infectious melodies, <laughs> infectious, ah, uh, yes. Well, anyway, the tracks, they're earworms that will just have you singing along. Now, the story dialogue is actually very witty, too. It's filled with a ton of snark, but delivered in ways that feel genuine to the characters. And each of them comes across as earnest, regardless if they're lovelorn, sarcastic, or just a D-bag. I mean, I think many are easy to root for, even if they didn't start out that way. And don't let the Christmas theme fool you into thinking that there won't be bloody violence, because there are some gnarly spots filled with bites and gore. But also, strewn throughout this, and then there is especially in the background shots, there are violent sight gags to make us chuckle and wince, which I think is also effective in making sure that we don't ever take our eyes off the screen. The pace is quick, but it's not rushed. We feel the urgency of the chase as the kids try to get from one area to another. But there are also spots where the story takes a breather to just allow us to emotionally connect with the characters and then have some heartfelt moments with them before continuing on in the insanity. Now, I know musicals aren't everybody's cup of tea, but I think this one can really captivate. It uses the teen angst that's present in the storytelling to enhance what's going on, which then creates this atmosphere where the characters may surprise you rather than annoy you. Now, Anna and the Apocalypse may feel slightly weird to watch during October, especially given the Christmas theme, but regardless of the time of year, this is a fun and a unique take on the undead. All right, so we're nearing the top of my list, and honestly, this one and my number one were a really tough choice at what would be at the top just because I love both so much, but for wildly different reasons. My number two zombie movie comes from my favorite director and also stars two of my favorite actors. Shaun of the Dead is from 2004. It's directed by Edgar Wright and it stars Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, along with a ton of others. Now this is billed as a rom-com zom, which means it's a romantic comedy with zombies. And then contained within that is a rich and wonderful social commentary. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this movie, the story follows two best friends, Shaun and Ed, who are both in this sort of state of arrested development. Ed more though than Shaun but their lives are pretty static and routine. They don't show much, if any, really ambition, and they're wholly content to just spend every night drinking pints at their local pub, the Winchester. Now, the setup for this story is so brilliant as we watch a series of behaviors carried out by Sean pre-zombie apocalypse, and then we watch him repeat these post said breakout and the extreme level of his unawareness. I mean, it's just so hilarious. Now, the film is filled with quotable lines that, at least in my house, are a staple for everyday conversation. If asked what the plan is for the day, my response is always, take the car, go to mom's, kill Phil, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice pint, and wait for all this to blow over. How's that for a slice of fried gold? And the movie has also changed the way I hear Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. I mean, I have to hit something in time with the beat like I'm whacking a zombie with the pool cue. And I love that there's a sense of peril in the story, which then makes the stakes very high and real. And there are characters that are very charismatic. And when they run the risk of dying, it's emotional intense. This is a killer mix of humor and gore. And most of the time, the violence shown to us is in bright red detail. But there are times where kills happen in the background. And I love the humor in this. I mean, they're sight gags meant to contrast the mood or the dialogue that's in front of us. And then both Peg and Frost, they execute it so freaking well. Now, something you may not be aware of is that Shaun of the Dead is the first feature from Wright after he had teamed up with Peg and Frost for their amazing comedy series, Spaced. And then Shaun kicks off what becomes the first of the Cornetto trilogy. Hot Fuzz is next in the series, followed by The World's End. And these, honestly, they just keep getting better and better for me. I laugh harder every time I see them. But now we're going back to Shaun. Wright pulls in his friends who appeared in his other works, especially Spaced. We get Peter Serafinowicz, Oi, prick! <laughs> 
And <laughs> there's also Jessica Hines. I mean, now as a huge fan of Spaced, it's awesome to see these cameos within Shaun of the Dead. And the level of gore in Shaun is excellent. I mean, it's a proper zombie movie with disembowelings and then appendages being ripped off. And yeah, there is a slight absurdity to it, but it works so well. And it becomes really tense and emotional as we reach the climax. And also, like many Edgar Wright films, the soundtrack is awesome. So as you watch the bloody carnage, you can tap your feet and bop your head along right to the awesomeness. You can't go wrong with Shaun of the Dead. The humor hits on multiple points. There's excellent social commentary. And then the relationships are complex and they're layered, leading to interactions that feel genuine and provide some gut punches too. And also, it's available on Peacock. But seriously, you really should own this one. All right, now before I get to my number one, I do have two honorable mentions for you. Now, the first is another rom-com zomp, but this one is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, and it's called Warm Bodies. It stars Nicholas Holt as R, this slightly dead dude who knows he's a zombie and yet also feels like he may not totally be one. And he falls in love with Julie, but of course, they're going to be forbidden from being together since he's dead and all. Now, this is a cute and contained story. And because it follows the story of Romeo and Juliet, there is a level of predictability to it. But it doesn't ruin any of the enjoyment. There is a great mix of humor, there's sarcasm, and of course, there's romance. Now, it's available on HBO Max at the moment, so give it a shot or maybe even a rewatch. And the other honorable mention is a straight-up action comedy starring Jesse Eisenberg, Emma Stone, Woody Harrelson, and Abigail Breslin. Now, the odd couple times two mix of these characters it really works, especially with Eisenberg's voiceovers and his reliance on the rules. Now, just like in Sean, this contains a ton of irreverent humor that is delivered awesomely by the cast. And their chemistry is also what makes this dialogue so effective in its snark and comedy. But I love that there are also emotional moments within the story, where we see humanity shine through even when a character puts on a tough facade. And obviously, I'm talking about Zombieland. Now, the quirkiness of the cast members allows for each of them to stand out in unique ways. And then the emotional bits, they're offset by some extreme violence that's exciting and ridiculous. This is a relatively short movie at under 90 minutes, so if you are in the mood for silly and exciting, with some great action and the characters that are easy to root for, certainly give Zombieland a watch. Now, this one isn't available on any streaming platform for free at the moment, but it is worth a rental or a purchase if you're so inclined. All right, we've arrived at my number one zombie film, and this one was a massive surprise to me the first time that I saw it. Train to Busan is a Korean zombie drama from 2016 that's directed by Sang Ho Young. Now, you can see it on Amazon Prime right now, and it is absolutely worth the watch. The story follows a dad taking his daughter on a train from Seoul to Busan as a zombie apocalypse breaks out. Now, the contained space of the train creates claustrophobic terror, which is made even more harrowing because of the characters that we meet and then the threat that they face. There's a level of humanity that is captured in the storytelling, and it causes palpable and visceral reactions to the fear and the peril that the passengers are up against. This is one of the longer zombie horror films, but that's also because it's a character drama amidst the undead terror. It's just under two hours, but every minute is necessary, and it compounds the emotional ride that we're taking on. These zombies are the fast-moving type, and because they move in a horde, they create this huge threat to anybody who's not dead. And the film expertly places our characters in moments that feel like there's a reprieve from the danger, only then to amp it up even more. When the story does this, the characters are typically placed in vulnerable positions, leading to urgent anxiety. There's a time when the train stops at a station that looks to be abandoned, but what follows is wild and terrifying. Now, the movie also sets up some hero moments that are sure to be gut punches. And that's what really makes this my number one pick for a zombie movie. This is the first, and maybe only one, to ever make me cry. The emotional investment that's created with the characters, it is shocking and unexpected too. So, of course, when bad things happen, and they're going to because this is a horror movie, but when they happen, they are designed to hurt our hearts. And whew, do they. And just because this is an emotional movie, don't think this shies away from the gory violence, because this is still a bloody horror. It's just one that's going to wreck you to your core. Now, the visual of the infected piling over each other and clamoring for their victims, it is a scary sight that happens multiple times in the movie, but it's also incredibly exciting. It's hard to watch this and not have your muscles tensed from all of the stress. Train to Busan is masterfully told and wildly engaging. The pacing is effective in putting us on an emotional roller coaster, amping us up with extreme danger and apprehension to let us relax momentarily, but never fully as we know that there's always some sort of danger around every bend. And when we get to the climax and then the conclusion, the ending is earned, but it's haunting. All right, so that's my list. How many of these have you seen? And which did you enjoy? 
More importantly though, what would be on your list for awesome zombie movies? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.